Hi, everyone. I am really excited to introduce our guest here today. He has worked with everyone from Paulo Coelho, a favorite author of mine, to Tony Robbins. He is an eight-time author working on another book, a New York Times best-selling author, and uh, just all-around awesome guy. I've had the chance to meet him in person uh, at, a, at an event and really excited to introduce him to you, Chris Brogan. I know many of you are familiar with him, but if you're not, I will say this. We're going to talk a little bit about email. I would, I've, I've never said this before in any of our interviews, and I probably won't say it again, but there is no one I know who, inter who emails people better than Chris. And there is just something very authentic. Basically, I think I can sum it up by I feel like I'm emailing a friend, um, even if it is an automated email. Uh, and in fact, I've definitely been tricked a few times by you, Chris, where I thought you were emailing me personally. <laughs> and I'm still not even sure if you were. <laughs> uh, so just really amazing, authentic emailing. And uh, so I would just say go and, and if you do nothing else, if you learn nothing else here today, just go and sign up for his email just to see how he does it because it's something we can all learn from and I know I'm learning from it. So uh, Chris, awesome to have you here. Really excited to chat with you today. Wow. Thanks, Greg. I appreciate it. And thanks for the kind words. I, I try never, you know, I never try to trick people so that they <laughs> really think that I'm only emailing them, but I can understand there's times when um, I do use my list to start a question with 36,000 people. So, you know, sometimes it's a little different than most people, you know, come get my Labor Day sale or something. I, I might start with what would sound exactly like a regular first sentence in a conversation. Right. Yeah. And um, yeah, I didn't mean to say that you trick. In fact, I'd say your emails are the least tricky of the ones out there. Um, and you're probably, I wouldn't be surprised if you in some ways initially get lower conversion rates because you're not pushing, you're not pushy, right? It's all about, hey, what are you drinking today? <laughs> right, right. No, I definitely, I, um, you know, I'll get emails from these like really professional email marketers saying, oh, you're just leaving money all over the place. You're a horrible marketer. And I'm like, oh, I know. Thanks. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's a different approach, right? Like, so there's that approach where you just slam people and, and, and beat them until they buy. And every single message that hits you is le leading you towards buying something. Or there's my approach, which is, I think I can help you. And sometimes the help doesn't cost any money. And sometimes there's something that's going to cost you money. And maybe there's a way that we can, you know, whichever way you're needed, you know, I can be there. And so I, I do my best to try to deliver on that. And I try to make the value there, even if you're not going to spend any money. Uh, but I ask for, for money, you know, at least once a week. So we see how yeah. it goes. So do you have like a, a sort of process or mindset or set of rules when you're putting together emails? Because it seems like there's very specific things that you don't do and things that you do frequently. Um, how do you go about planning that out? Or is so it my, just No, there's some plans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's plans. Uh, one of the things that's kind of an, uh, common in my email is that if you, the very first paragraph almost always mentions something I'm drinking and asks you the question, what am I drinking? And people have always asked me, why do you ask that? Like, seems like a weird question. And I have a really simple answer that, again, makes marketers so mad because they're thinking there's some magic trick. And it's really this. If you don't have anything else you could possibly say to me, uh, you could at least tell me what you're drinking. It's a good <laughs> likelihood that you drank something. You know, uh, yeah. And uh, there's this guy, Joe. Uh, his name is Joe. And he has written me back every single email I've ever sent him on Sunday and uh, writes like coffee. <laughs> <laughs> like as if I'm doing a survey. And that's it. He just says the word coffee, he hits send. And I'll write him back like a paragraph or two, like, you know, usually, oh, that's really good. I wonder what kind of beans they are. Are they from Columbia? He never writes back again. He just always says coffee. <laughs> um, the other thing I do in my emails is uh, if there's a link, it's usually something I want you to buy. I don't yep. give you a lot of links to go all over the place because a lot of times, you know, we're trying to refer to kind of give people a lot of information, but the more links we give, no one's going to click. Because right. they're, trying to, they're trying to follow the flow of the message. Or they're going to click and get lost in some new world. A tab opens up and next thing you know, we're in Facebookville. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm going to lose you. So I only try to make one link per message. Or a couple of links, but they're all going to the same place. You right. know, one way or another, I'm going to get you there. Um, and if there's an exception, sometimes like for my Shine Friday newsletter, all those links are you know, to learn more about other people. And they're not usually for business. And what I found about that is that it kind of warms people up for if they feel like clicking. So I've given people uh, one or two methods in there. So my, my message is, 
I would probably sound like I was smarter than I am if I said there's some psychological intent in all of them, but I have intent at least in all of my messages of how I want someone to react to them and how I want someone to take an action. Sometimes I just want people to hit reply and tell me what they're thinking. Other times I'm trying to drive them someplace and you have to engineer that because if you don't, you're going to ask people what they're thinking and then give them things to click and you're not going to hear back and you're going to yeah. feel bad. Yeah. Or you're going to tell people, I really want you to click something and you've given them so much to think about that they hit reply and talk to you instead. So you got to make it so that they're going to go where you need them to go. So that's something, in, I mean, and I remember when we were talking in San Diego, you were mentioning, yeah, you were mentioning sort of a Sunday, I think Sunday is the day you get a lot of responses back on your emails, right? And talking about responding to a thousand emails on a Sunday before you get out with your kids. Uh, and I know that I know people who have 500, 1,000 people on their email list who are afraid to go and ask someone, what are you drinking or how's it going? Uh, because they don't think it's scalable or really weird. Uh, they think it's kind of creepy to go and sort of reach out to people. Um, so, well, what, the first question really is how do, you, how do you deal with that sort of scale? I mean, I guess you just buckle down and respond to it or is there a mindset to looking at it that way of it's okay if 1,000 people write me back? Yeah. Uh, so one of the things people think is that you're going to write back a fully composed email, you know, dear Greg, how are you? Uh, platitudes to you on this beautiful day. I hope the weather is beautiful and that the trees outside of your house are delightful. Um, no, you write back. Oh, Greg, that's actually a really good point. I should think about that for my next newsletter, Chris. Right. right. And, and then the person feels like you heard me. Yep. Right. And I, and I do read, I, I read every single thing someone writes me because a lot of times people want to put something at the bottom that wants to trick me. Oh, and just in case you've read this far, you know, my son, Daniel, uh, really appreciated your book, The Freaks. And I'll write back, Daniel's a great son then. Uh, you should have named him Chris. <laughs> so I'm always kind of trying to, you know, help people realize that I'm really there. Yeah. And then people will say, is it really you? And I've got a notepad by my desk, which is somehow now missing. Yeah. That I write, hi, Jennifer, and I put the photo up so <laughs> they can see it. Because yeah. there's so, you know, but what does that tell us, Greg? It tells us that everyone out there is trying to trick you or that's what we've been trained, that everything's a gimmick. And so I am, I can answer a thousand emails in, in a day. Uh, by the way, so 600 emails, would, if you answered one minute each is 10 hours. Like that's, yeah. But at a list of 36,000 people, that's an awesome problem to have. That's, that's yeah. 600 to 1,000 potential buyers yeah. or previous buyers or someone that yeah. I want to make happy, right? Um, by comparison, most people have that strange feeling like, well, they only want me when they have money or they only want me when they need money. Um, I'm always there for people. I'm always there to connect. And, and some people have never bought, you know, yeah. been on my list for six or seven years. And some people buy everything I put out. I swear I could, mm -hmm. you know, uh, spit in a cup and say, here's some spit. And they, ah, oh, love that. <laughs> you know, I, I haven't yeah. really tried anything gross like that, but yeah. I just get that feeling that some people just buy whatever goes in front of them. Yeah. Um, so I want to serve both. I want to serve people and make sure that they, f they feel seen. And, and I can tell you that a lot of times I get a message that will say something like, um, I didn't want to bother you. But again, yeah. what, what owner of a business doesn't want people to bother them? I would love to be bothered. Yeah. It's, it might be a way to help or it might be a sale. Yeah, it's a great way to look at it because I think some people are afraid to get those responses back because they're worried they're going to get overwhelmed by it. But you're right. It's a great problem. Get overwhelmed, right? Get overwhelmed with so many customers coming to you that now you can look at, okay, what am I going to do? Should I hire someone to help me this? I mean, now you have enough customers where you can actually scale your business. So I, I, I love that approach to it. So this was, this was kind of an odd one and I'm sure it's a sort of easy ish answer for you is, is there was actually a recent debate in our Facebook group around, someone just bought your course, should I be sending them a personal email saying, you know, hey, thanks, if you need anything, uh, reach out, I'm here to help. And the debate was whether that was creepy and too invasive or friendly, good customer service. And I was kind of surprised that there was any kind of debate about this because I do this. I, at one point, anyone who picked up any product or course of mine, I, it was a personal email. I would even look up their IP address to figure out where they were. And I'd be like, oh, hey, I was in Boston, you know, once. It's a beautiful city. How's it going? you know, any thoughts on that? I'm, I'm pretty sure I know which way you'll go, but. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'd go as far as, you know, IDing their place of origin, but I mean, that, that's getting creepy, Greg. But no, I, I um, we do a, a lot of that. So I don't remember if Rob coined it or if I coined it, but we have a phrase at our company called to automate is human. 
And mm -hmm. what we use all of our automation tools for is to afford us the opportunity for a real one-on-one -on -one connection with somebody. Mm -hmm. However, we do use tools for that. Yeah. So I'll give you one example um, we use right now Infusionsoft for our email service provider. And we had an autoresponder that if someone clicked on the sales page but didn't click buy, we'd bang it really quick and say, hey, oh, notice you hadn't, you know, you didn't do anything. Can, can we answer a question? Did we do anything wrong? Yeah. And we got an overwhelming amount of negative email about that like oh really leave me alone i was just checking the page out what the hell yeah. what are you jumping on we, we we did a thing where we waited anywhere from nine to 22 minutes yeah. uh and sent the same exact email oh thanks yeah you know what I, I did have a question i was wondering do you guys take paypal and you know or i did have a question is this going to be video and text and whatever and it was just uh, putting in a little delay yeah. made people think it was absolutely personable huh no other change and so that we learned something. We learned that if you jump someone, they get a little weirded out. Yeah. If you wait a minute, it seems normal. Yeah. I don't, I don't get it, but that's what we've discovered. The <laughs> other thing is we do a lot of personalized response and, and, and I am not always personal response because I don't sit around watching the sales click in. I mean, I guess I should, Rob does, but, um, I rather, you know, have it sort of in a set of timers where we'll send out a message five or six days out and say, you know, you know, I know you picked up the course. I was just curious, how are you feeling about it? What else is going on? You know, I miss anything or, or what are you really hoping to apply this for? You know, what do you, you know, when you're done, what's this going to do for you? And yeah. I think that, uh, and by the way, every email we send from my company, you can reply to every single email goes back to a human hand. We have no do not replies or please don't God write back to us.com. Yeah. You know, it's all like, come get it. Yeah. And we get great feedback from that. We get, yeah. you know, I, you know, this isn't really what I thought it was going to be. And I say, oh, 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 but it is. And here's why or whatever. Or maybe it isn't. And we say, maybe you should switch into this course. This might be more what you're trying to solve there. Right. And, um, I'd much rather that than someone buy the course, suffer, not actually do the work and say, oh, I wasted my money. Because right. I, want, I want that money and I want the next money. Yeah. And so I try really hard to connect with people so that they'll give me those opportunities to serve them. Right. Yeah. And that, you know, you'll end up with, you, you head off so many future problems on that basis, even things like negative reviews and, and, uh, well, just generally unhappy people isn't good. Yeah. Um, awesome. Okay. So, uh, online course maker, that's a program. One of the, you've got a lot of programs out that help people, but I wanted to chat. Obviously our audience here is all about courses and creating courses. Uh, lots of entrepreneurs, coaches, experts, authors. Um, you've got the online course maker, uh, program. Can you fill us in a little bit on that and, uh, what you share there? Yeah. So when I launched it, it was a total absolute lark. I, you know, someone said, man, your courses seem so simple. Like, how could I do that? And I was like, oh, I guess I haven't really explained what I do to make a course. And it's probably a little different than what other people do. And we went at it very much from what goes into it content wise and, and how to serve people and all that sort of thing. And I would, I feel like in a lot of ways I was ahead of a lot of people in, in the way that I put my stuff out, not you. I mean, you were there way before me, but, um, the kinds of hooligans who are putting out courses now that are like me, um, came, came after hearing that I got pretty successful with this one. And, and so what we put together, I mean, the real simple problem, I, I always try to figure out what am I going to solve for a problem? So I didn't think I need to make a course on online courses. Someone said, I'm running out of uh, time and I'm not making enough money. And I thought, Oh, well, what if you stop trading hours for dollars? Like, you know, yeah. what if I found a way to get you off of time-based money making? And so yeah. I figured out if you had a course, then there's some stuff you could put in that course that you could charge a set fee and then not really be there one-on-one -on -one with the person. And that was kind of who we started helping. And, you know, doctors, uh, medical people uh, were some of the first people. And then we got a lot of coaches, web design types. Web design types, you know, one of the things I said to them is, you know, you can make a course on how to get your stuff ready to make it cheaper and easier for me to work with you, you know? And, and so sometimes the courses don't exactly make the person money, but it's a great lead tool for, you know, getting some more business. So we built online course maker. There's six modules in it that, you know, are fairly simple, how to develop, you know, the idea and the building blocks, how to, how to put the content in ideas, you know, such as they're going to teach. We do a pricing one. We have a whole tech one marketing and sales. And then, uh, you know, how do you actually get it right over the finish line? We've had a you know, few hundred, 300, 400 people buy it so far. I can't remember. It's like 380 something. Um, and, and out of a list of only 36,000. So that's not, you know, it's not insignificant. No, not and, at all. 
you know, we had a lot of good people saying, you know, that this is working for them. We asked for testimonials, which is, you know, a nice thing. And people's feedback was pretty good. They, they said that it was a very um, an easygoing approach. And, uh, you know, not that you asked this question, but one of the things that I always tell people is that, you know, having good tools really makes that easier too. So yeah. um, I recommend Thinkific amongst a couple other tools, just because of the fact that it's just so easy to, to take your ideas and get them from crazy idea into some sort of structure. Um, and I think that looking back on it since I've launched it, I think that where people get the most hung up, I, I thought they'd get most hung up on how do I actually make the content real. I think they don't know where to put it all. And I think that, you know, even having, you know, in a way, think if it's like a nice kitchen with all the right uh, pots and pans and you know where everything is and you can go reach for it because it's like, boom, I, oh, crap, I just made this rice. Where do I put it? I got to put it over here right now because I got to get these vegetables, you know, fried up first, right? I think that there's something to having a place to put all your content where I create my stuff sort of up in the air and then put the plate underneath. Yeah. I think that, you know, what's, what people struggle with a lot is what you solve. So that's kind of fun too. Cool. Thanks. That's great. <laughs> and uh, I didn't mention it earlier. I'll definitely put it in the notes, but uh, it's owner.media. Is that the best place to get started, to get in touch with you, check out your emailing, also check out online course maker? Yeah. Owner.media is fine. And uh, if you want the newsletter specifically, just owner.media slash NL. Um, okay. And people ask me the question all the time, what's it like having one of those weird domains that's not .com or .net? Yeah. We've not, I, I had a .co domain and that was misery and no one could find me and they always had the M for themselves. Uh, the .media, so far, everyone's been pretty good at finding me. It's been good stuff. Excellent. Oh, that's good. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I would, uh, I've, I've uh, heard wonderful things. We've had lots of people uh, who've gone through your program and then come and check us out and use it. So for anyone who's looking for some more help on the online course side or getting into it or, or looking to do some of their new stuff, I definitely suggest checking out your course. Um, definitely. I've seen lots of people who've seen good results from it. Uh, so one other thing I wanted to talk about, well, there was a couple of other things, but one on, um, you know, kind of, getting more exposure and list growth. And uh, I mean, you are very sort of friendly and authentic as we talked about in your approach to things, but any tips for people who are sort of newer in the space of developing a bit of a following? How, you know, do you have unique ways or, or how do you kind of go about getting that exposure, especially in the earlier days? Yeah, so what I tend to like to tell people is, I, I have a few ideas in mind. One thing I want to say is that, um, the first and foremost idea is that you've got to try to figure out who you're going to serve and how you can serve them. Meaning a lot of people come to me because I have a really big say Twitter following. I have 343,000 people that follow me on Twitter and they're like, Hey, I think I made this really great helpful thing. You should tweet it to your people. And I almost always don't because first off, you're just kind of trying to use my list. And second off, they didn't target it. You know, they would, they'd put out anything, you know, uh, 25, uh, gardening tips to avoid. And I'm like, I don't, I don't talk to any gardeners. I don't, I mean, yeah. maybe some people I know have a garden, but that's not what we talk about. Right. And so first off is target, you know, the kind of people you actually hope to serve. Second off, look for the up and comers. It's a lot harder to get the attention of, I don't know, Guy Kawasaki or somebody like that. than it is someone who's also rising in the same waters as you, you know, right. find someone who has a similar amount of followers and, and of any kind of any platform and connect with them. And if you're not like social media active, don't worry, all the stuff I'm talking about, you can do in real life too. Yeah. Um, if you're doing it local volunteer to speak places for free and get people excited about the course and then you can bring them the information and say, Hey, I've got a course that really follows this up. I'd love to talk to you about it at the back, man, I've got this great offer that's only for people in this room right now, blah, 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 you know, old timey marketing. The other thing, and the whole process is find ways that you can uh, uh, warm people up to the idea of the course if they don't know much about you by maybe even doing like a small mini course, like as a giveaway in your uh, email autoresponder. Uh, so if you know, you're selling uh, boat supplies, I, I don't know why I don't have great ones already made up in my head because I always pick one randomly and then it's a hard one. So if it's <laughs> boat supplies, it might be, you know, um, the six things you need on your boat uh, every single summer or whatever, or, you know, five ways to get more life out of your boat. And it's like five little video things and it could be free. Right. And it could yeah. be a small little series and it warms people up to getting your stuff. And then you sell them, you know, the, the ultimate self boat maintenance kit or whatever. And I think that there's a value to that. Finally, the, the last thing I always tell people and it's the first piece of advice I give every human, no matter what is just be helpful. 
you know, because I think that a lot of times we accidentally go after things with this, I really need attention and I'm starving and I, and I, I got, I got to make some money. And you look like the, you know, nervous person at the bar or whatever. You look like the most desperate person in the room. If you're helpful, then people are like, oh, I'd like to help some more. I, I love that. It's such a simple piece of advice, but it, it, uh, I think it encapsulate, encapsulates a lot of things that are, that people try to say in much more complex ways. Like, you know, when you first join a Facebook group, don't go in there and start posting all of your links and lead magnets. Just go in and offer to help people and, you know, look for questions, answer them, just give, give, give. Uh, but the, the, that I like, I, I, I actually just wrote it down. Be helpful. Yeah, uh, like, I, mean, I know. It's such, such, such a great advice. way of saying it. But it, it works. Well, let me give you a real life example involving Greg Smith of Thinkific. Um, <laughs> You will remember this. At the same time, you and I were just getting acquainted. Some other person with a with a, a course selling platform got in, acquainted with me as well, and he wanted to promote his course selling platform. He was really excited. He found his way into my private Facebook group and started telling people how to get into this platform and how to get their uh, special discount and all that. In the meantime, you were over here saying. Hey, I, this is really great. I really love that you're working on this. You know, I'd love to work with your people. You were so helpful. You gave so much good advice. You said, there's these cool things. I wanted to show you a demo if that's helpful. Everything you did led with that. So not only did you write it down, but you, uh, you demonstrated it early on. And so that other guy, I, he, he got back in touch with me uh, two months ago and I wrote him back. I said, I clearly remember last time, so no thanks. <laughs> You know, so we burned a bridge. Meanwhile, uh, you and I meet in San Diego and we have this great warm face to face. That's what I'm looking for in my business. And I think that's what everyone should be looking for is that sense of, I like to work with a person like Greg. And then hopefully they're gonna wanna work with a person like whoever is watching this. Thanks, yeah, I appreciate it. It's been, and it's been fun, it's good. And it, to me, it just feels better to do it that way, things that way too. It's, uh, it, I think it, hopefully it comes natural. Obviously it comes naturally to you because um, everything I see you doing is sort of about being helpful. Yeah, it's, I, I can't say that everyone's exactly born with this belief, but I, I can tell you that I have money and numbers to back it up. I can tell you that anytime I'm desperate and I need money, I never sell anything. It always goes horrible. Everything is bad. Um, and I seem desperate and, and people are in a horrible way. When I need money, but I seek to help other people, mm -hmm. all the money shows up. It, it magically shows up. It starts showing up in ways that you start going, how did this even happen? And it just happened to me. It just happened a month and a half before you and I recorded this, we were in a really bad sales dip and just out of nowhere, a whole bunch of opportunities landed on me. I did, the only thing I did any different was not worry about it and just really help. And when I say don't worry, please don't make the mistake of thinking, I mean, don't try to make money. Right, yeah. Just try to do it by helping people. Yeah, yeah, and that makes sense. Not, not, not walk away and do nothing. <laughs> yeah. Video games are an awesome way not to think about money, but they don't pay you anything. Yeah, yeah. Unless you're writing a book about uh, how they relate to entrepreneurialism. <laughs> then you might be okay. You might be covered. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, great. Uh, other, so we, actually, there was one other thing I noticed that, so you, tons of people do webinars, obviously. You charge a really small fee for your webinars. And I think it ties to, I'm guessing it kind of ties to the fact that your webinars are actually much more helpful and very much about, I'm gonna bring you a lot of value. You still sell stuff on them, but it's not that, you know, the primary purpose isn't just, hi, I'm here to pitch you. Um, you know, how do you, how'd you get into sort of charging for, the, for a webinar, even if it's a small fee? What's the, what's the kind of psychology mentality there? So this was magic. This is, uh, if you didn't get anything out of the whole rest of this, this is the magic part. It, $20 is the new free. That's our saying around owner media group. $20 is the new free. 20 is a discretionary amount of money for most human beings. Yep. And uh, for the kind of people you're hoping are gonna spend money with you, you better hope 20 bucks isn't a whole lot in their mind, right? right? Like if they're really considering a $20 purchase, they're probably not gonna buy the thing you really want them to buy. So that's the first thing you gotta put in your head. Second, when we were giving away free webinars to come learn about the thing we wanted to show them, we were stuffing those webinars with value and no one was showing up. We couldn't get 100 people to sign up. I had a wow. thousand seat license for go to webinar and I had never crossed a hundred. And I was just like, this is the worst. Yeah. The first time we ever put out a $20 webinar, we sold 684 seats. And I was just like, huh, okay, that makes no sense. Like I would have expected far fewer. I, wow. I was telling Rob, you know, 12 people are gonna sign up for this. We sold 684, wow. um, zero requests for money back. Uh, sorry, one, uh, but he was a weird person. 
and we helped we helped him find his way off our list. Um, <laughs> no, because he was just crazy, um, and uh, bless his heart, he, he you know he, he deserved his money back because there was no way he was going to find value in it uh, with what he was doing. So six hundred and eighty three people paid and were happy with what they got. And we told them at the very beginning of the webinar, after we explained some uh, mechanical stuff, we said, and we're going to pitch you. Like, yeah. so, so don't not think there's a pitch because you paid 20 bucks, but I'm yeah. going to give you six times the value. You yeah. can't leave this without thinking you've got 120 bucks worth of value if you right. apply this stuff. And so we've done that a bunch now and it's just become part of how we do what we do. We so much so that we came up with a subscription service. So it's more like Netflix. So you can right. give us 20 bucks for one webinar or 20 bucks a month and you can watch everything and you just right. watch our whole back catalog and whatever we come up with. Um, so we've got, uh, I think, 600 people in that now, which is nice because they just don't ever have to think about it anymore. And they also, we exclude them from all the sales letters for it. So, you know, right. as, the, as the standard list is getting pummeled, these people don't hear a thing. They just get their sign up. Like, right. you just show up on this day or get the recording the next day, happy day. Um, the great experience we've had is that it sets everyone back at ease because when we're going to a free webinar, we're forever like, okay, when's the pitch coming? We, we don't even hear all the good <laughs> advice because the pitch is all the thing we're worried about. How much is it going to be? Am I going to afford it? How pressure are, are they going to pressure me a lot? You know, and so we worry about all these things. So I just say up front at my webinars, oh, I'm going to pitch you, but don't worry. You're going to have a great time. Yeah. And we'll answer every question you could possibly think to ask. And, you know, it's been a wonderful experience. But the other thing is that a lot of times webinars have led to what we call jump starts, which are halfway between a course and a webinar. It's yep. a little bit more. It could be two modules or so, but it's not like four and eight weeks or whatever. And that's become one of our better selling things because people feel like they don't have time for a full fledged course, but they can do a one or two or four module jumpstart. Yeah. So it became a selling platform with, that we didn't expect. And that's actually 78% or so of my revenue is coming from online sales of courses and webinars. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. Uh, and I know you, you had one I saw a while back around uh, course, course creation, the uh, webinar. Do you have any of those coming up soon? Uh, you know, that's a great question. We, we run those a couple different times a year, uh, mostly because we have so many ways that we're uh, trying to promote the uh, different ways to use online course maker. Yeah. Um, so my guess is the next time we'll put one of those out will probably be closer towards either, uh, either August or maybe very early September. We, okay. for some reason, our uh, collective souls, at least in the Western hemisphere, see September as school time. And so right. it becomes a time where we think about making courses. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. That in January with the new year's resolution. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Well, definitely share us with share that with us because I'm sure a lot of us would love to come out and uh, check it out because I know there's sure. some good value in there too. My pleasure. Great. Awesome. Uh, I really appreciate your time, Chris. That was amazing. And uh, tons of really good, I mean, even just in, in kind of off the cuff questions, tons of good value, I think, for our audience and people, things that they can grab on and, and learn both from the email side and, and the webinar trick. I'm, I'm already thinking how, how I could maybe put that to use in a couple of different areas. So that's, that's uh, awesome to hear that it's going well, because I see it from the outside, the strategies you use, but I'm never really sure what the psychology is behind it or um, or how it's actually working for you. So to hear that it's working well, that's, that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no, it, it's, uh, we're pleasantly surprised and you know, we get clunkers sometimes that don't sell so well, but what I like about that is that you go, Oh, well stop doing that. And I didn't, I didn't spend any money on AB testing. I tested with people's $20 bills. Right. Yes. And definitely a really, I'm always a much more effective test when there's money involved than when there's none. Right. Exactly. So, I, I mean, yeah. you probably run into this a lot where people think they have this great idea for a course, 205 of this person's friends say it's a great idea for the course. No one buys the course. <laughs> and it's all because it you know, turns out that no one who had any money who wanted to pay for it, no one had that problem to solve. Right. Yeah. So good to test in the beginnings and with the money too is great. Uh, awesome. So if you guys are interested in more about Chris, uh, seeing how he emails, checking out some of his courses or webinars, definitely recommend checking out owner.media and owner.media slash NL. Is that right? For the, uh, if it's just for the, the, the newsletter? Sure. Well, don't worry. I'll pop you up the minute you're hanging out there. So <laughs> I'll be begging you to get on my newsletter. Yes. And so that's the thing I would say, go check it out and just go like watch what he does because he's good at this stuff. So watch what he does and, and kind of go through the experience and, and learn from it because there's some really good stuff in there for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Greg. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it.